welcome back. So we will begin our activity for storing uh, data inside your uh, Android devices using shared preference by developing the tele counter application okay, such as this. So what you need to do is just to create a new Android application. Okay, and select uh, empty activity. So you can start by typing a tele counter. Okay, like this. Ensure that you use Java because this uh, tutorial will be inside Java. And then ensure that you use a minimum SDK of API 23 or 20. 21 okay if you prefer also can okay 20 or 31 also can but i suggest you to use 23 okay, and then click uh, finish first thing first is to wait uh, until the gradle finish of processing okay next uh, we try to design the layout okay, this is the default layout you can waste this a little bit so you can uh, put here the ID of the text view. Okay, you can put a TV counter uh, if you want. Right, the layout should still the same. Next, uh, we should uh, change the font size if you want it to make it bigger. Okay, like this. Okay, it's up to you. So next, we should have a button. So we have already learned how to create button and how to uh, make the button activated with okay, on click listener. So you can use on click listener to activate this button. So what I'm doing here is just to link uh, this corner. So we call this constraint. Okay, I'm setting the constraint because we are using a constraint layout. Okay, if you read here, we are using constraint layout. So I'm setting the constraint for this button so that the button would be uh, placed under this text, right? Like here. Okay, and then we should have another button for reset. A good practice if you can put the button at the bottom and uh, one at the middle. So you can set any button, you can even use a floating action button for this. Okay, this seems to be easy. Alright, okay. Even put it under here. Okay. Right, next, uh, we ensure that this would um, pass the fits law. Okay, you can put your match parent. Okay, type here match. Okay, parent at the layout width. This similar to here. You type here match parent. All right. Okay, another thing is that we should change the ID because this ID. On this ID, we want to create uh, an add button, right? Add like this. So, and change the button, okay, to BTN add, okay, so that it might be easier for us to find this button in the Java code. Okay, next, we should change the label, okay, label add. And this button should be reset. You okay, change it at the text. Okay, and then don't forget to change its ID, BTN, reset. Okay, you realize that there are no margin or padding over here. So to change margin and padding, go to the constraint layout. Okay, okay constraint layout like this. And then search for padding or margin. You can also use padding. Okay. Click over here, this is padding. Okay, click over here, padding left and right. Okay, 16 is a standard padding for uh, mobile devices uh, like uh, handphone. But if you are using um, tablet, it should be about 64. Okay, 64 DIP. Okay, dot, uh, uh, DIP is a unit, uh, unit for dot, uh, dot independent pixel. 
the independent pixel density sorry density independent pixel dip right now we are finished on the layout designing we will try to uh, code okay the application so coding the application is simple we just okay practice back what we have already learned in the previous lab okay btn okay button we have btn add btn reset and then you also have text view so what text view that we have is tv oh we have a text view over here okay let's check it back okay tv counter so the tv counter didn't register here Okay, TV counter. Okay, and then import. Press alternate enter. Okay, to import the class. So likewise, uh, I don't use annotation, so you can use this. Okay, uh, find view by ID. Find view by ID. R dot ID dot btn app. Btn reset equals button. So if you practice this enough, you will be able to do this uh, as quickly as possible. Okay, no harm, no foul. Text view. Find view by ID. Uh, dot ID dot. ID counter. Alright. Okay, next, uh, what we should do is to add functionality. Okay, to the add button. So if you recall back or remember uh, at our previous lab session we need to implement on click listener okay we need to implement on click listener in order to add functionality to the button so we can alternate uh, enter here under the red underline and then implement on click we have view and then you use switch so you can switch uh, view dot get ID. Okay, we try to recognize the button, differentiate the uh, button using ID. Okay, get ID. So you can get ID on from the view. So view is here, pass over here. You get the ID, and then from the ID, you can switch it in order to recognize uh, which button are being pressed. Okay, so for button add, you need to put here the ID of button add. Okay, R dot ID button add, and then break. Okay, this is just a simple uh, switch case. Okay, case R dot ID dot by a BTN reset. So this is a break. Okay. Okay, and then don't forget to connect the button uh, to the on-click listener. So each button need to be connected uh, individually. So we set on-click listener to this, right? BTN dot reset set on-click listener to this, right? So this button will be connected to here. When you press the button, the button will function. All right. Next, uh, we try to run the application. Okay, I'm going to change to Nexus Pi. Okay, let's see how the application would uh, look like. Right. Here comes my emulator. Okay, this is the reference. Okay, this is the one that I just uh, launched. Okay, we have two button. Okay, almost the same. Okay, this one have lower resolution. This one have higher resolution. Pixel three. So why I use uh, two uh, emulator because I want to show you the differences between uh, our design and then our progress. Right, like this. Right, next. Uh, we want to ensure that uh, when we uh, press add, the number will increase over here. 
So for that, we must have a counter. So int count, okay, like this. It declare a class variable. Okay, a class variable. A class variable like this. Int count, okay, sometimes uh, you want to put a, uh, a modifier, whether it is private or public, okay. And sometimes you just leave it just like this one. Okay, become a public. A yeah, public uh, variable. Right. Next, uh, what we need, we need to do is to create a new method. Okay, for adding. So we can create a new method. Public void add counter. It can be like this. Oh, right. Public counter. So you have count equals count plus one, right, like this. Okay, and then don't forget that you need to initialize this to zero or you will get an error. So you can initialize this below here, count equals zero. Okay, because uh, on create will be called first, count will become zero when you click uh, add. We call add counter and uh, the add counter will add uh, one by one. And then don't forget to display the result. So you can display the result by using TV counter dot set text. And then you can use this trick in order to avoid uh, using a lengthy uh, converter. You can also convert uh, the integer to string. But sometimes I become lazy and just uh, just do like this concatenate uh, the integer with string. For it to become the spring. Okay. Oh, okay. Like this. Okay, take a look at the our progress. Okay, what left to do is to call this method. So you can call this method over here. Add counter. So it means that when you press the button, this get gets called out, and then this will be activated, and then if we call counter. When you call counter, the count will increase. And then after the count will increase, the counter will add. So let's play back the application. Okay, it's supposed to work, right? Okay, it's supposed to work like this. Oh, easy. We have already done the first part. However, this is where the local storage uh, would come in. Okay, the problem is that when you exit the application, the number isn't safe. Right, the number isn't safe. Ah, dia tak safe number. Right, dia tak safe. Bila kita exit application, number tersebut dia tak safe. Okay, the number would be gone by the time you exit the application. Okay, you can see that. Okay, the number is gone. So, we want to save the number. So, what uh, should you do? So, um, so, that's why you need to use Chat preference, okay, data file storage, uh, but we need to use uh, shared preference. Okay, add preference or shared preference. So you can look at the URL over here. Okay, this is the references from the Google. So you use a key value pair, okay, principles. Okay, this is how you uh, can use uh, the shared preference to get the value. And then to save the value. So we have two uh, form. First, we have to get the handle to the shared preference. And then we should write the shared uh, preference. And then we can retrieve back the save value from the preference. So that's how you uh, can save the number and then retrieve back the number. Okay, this one, it forgot the number. Okay, let's start by uh, trying to do this. You can use copy, but uh, I think this would uh, entail a lot of uh, modification. Right, for shared preference, you can type over here, shared preferences. 
in a shed, prep. Okay, you can type it like this. If I'm not mistaken, shed prep, no S. All right, we try to be uh, consistent. Okay, like this one. Okay, declare a global, a global variable, uh, a global class variable or public variable or class level variable in Java. Okay, if this makes it easier, and then paste. Right. Okay, context say you replace with this. Okay, because this is the activity. And then R string. So the value, R string means the value. Okay, the value. Uh, you can put any value that you want. Now uh, let's say that uh, you want to put a value as counter. Okay, because you want to save the counter. Okay, and of course, uh, context should import it by clicking alternate enter okay by pressing alternate enter so there you go you have shared prep okay what you need to do next is to save if i'm not mistaken to save okay to write to shared preference okay, you need to write or to save the data to the shared preferences so in order to save the data you need to have shared preferences editor so where do you save the data? You can copy paste this and then you have to imagine where you want to save the data. So logically, you want to save the data after you add the counter, right? Logically, you want to save data after you add the counter. So it means that when you press add over here, the data is automatically saved. So when you exit the application and then when you enter back, the data would uh, not be lost uh, like this. So you just paste it here, right? So editor dot put integer and put here counter as the key, and then for the value you put here count. So where I get the count is from here, okay, and then apply. Okay, editor apply. Don't forget to put editor dot apply, right over here. So now the data is safe. Okay, it's safe. But um, it um, although the data is being safe, we haven't write the routine or the function to display the data when you start the application, right? When you go back and then start the application, you need to have the data to display the data back. So when you play this. Right, replay this. Although the data is safe, but it's not retrieved. So when you uh, click add, you click back. Okay, it still appear that it's not like being safe. Okay, because this is because you haven't load the data. So in order to load the data, so after you retrieve the shared preference, you need to uh, get the data. So to get the data, you need to use uh, count. Okay, type here count. Shared pref, get integer. Okay, type here get integer. You can put your count and then zero uh, for the default value. Oh, counter, sorry, counter. Right, because the name uh, of the key is counter. All right. So this is just for loading the data. Okay, load the data. And then this for writing the data. It's writing or saving the data. Okay, saving the data. So just like that, uh, the data is retrieved. Okay, only that you need to display it back. Okay, let's see. Uh, the differences. Okay, you see that uh, it's already 14. Okay, 16, 18, 19, it should be 20 by the time we uh, exit the application. Right, when I click this, it should display 20. Right, 20, 21, 23, 24, 25. All right, and then it become hello world again, and then 26, 27. So, you see that the data has been saved. Okay, the data has been saved. Only it's not displayed when you restart back the application. So in order to for the data to be displayed back, when you restart the application, you need to call 
tax view, right? Tax view over here, TV counter, dot set tax. Put here, plus counter. Eh, sorry, count. <laughs> count. So, when you restart this application, right? So, oh, reset is haven't been functioning yet. So, you just press back. Right, okay. So, it seems that the data is safe. So, that's all how to use preferences to save and load the data. So, you load the data like this. Okay, you first you have to declare the shared preferences. And then you load the data like this. And then you write the data like this. You can also put uh, integer or put a uh, string. If you want to retrieve the integer, you just put uh, shared preferences, get string. Uh, kalau kata nak save nama lah, ha, nama kita pakai string. Kalau integer, panggil get integer. Kalau float ataupun double, shared pref dot get float. Uh, get float, dia tak double, dia punya ada float. Only we have float, so we can have float. Okay, wait. So, wait, uh, wait like this. And then, if you have the data about uh, string, so string can be named, we can uh, okay, get the data like this, uh, wait, like this, wait, we can retrieve it, uh, 0, 0.0, default value, this is a default value if the data haven't been saved yet, okay. And then you can put here name, uh, name, name, uh, so this is just how uh, example on how you can retrieve the data. Right. So what's next? Right. What's next? Okay. We need to use reset. Okay. We need to make the reset functional. So to make the reset functioning uh, is also simple. You just need to create another method. Your own method. Okay. Okay. You can put your reset. Okay, counter. Okay, because we have uh, add counter. Another one is you can put reset counter. So reset counter, you reset it to zero. So recount. And then do not forget to set the TV counter to okay like this, right? Zero. Set it to zero. And then you save, right? You save the preferences. Okay, to zero. Okay. And then the reset button have already completed. So very simple. Uh, okay, very simple. Okay. Oh, the reset is not functioning. <laughs> yes, I forgot. I forgot to call the reset. So this is grey. So when this is grey out, means that I forgot to call the reset uh, method. So we call it here under this. You just press uh, replay back, then you press reset, should reset, okay, like this. Okay, easy and simple, you almost uh, already completed, sorry, you have already completed a simple tele counter application. You, can, uh, you just type here, press add, 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 reset, add, 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 and then save, reset. Right, next, uh, what we are going to do is a bonus scene. So, bonus is that uh, you can actually create some animation. So, if you look here at the reference, okay, you realize that the number can be uh, animated like this. Okay, number can be animated like this. Right, it's uh, kind of pleasing to the eyes compared to what uh, we have already created here. So, in the right side, okay, the number is just static. So, sometimes we want to make our application much more interesting like uh, it is alive. So, for that, you can use the count animation text view library. So, the count animation text view library will allow your numbers to be shot up, right? Like this, okay, to be shot up. So, how to use them? So, how to use the count animation uh, library? Okay, you just need to copy this, alright, at the end of the build gradle. Just go to the app level uh, gradle script. 
Okay, here, okay, module or app level, you have a uh, telecounter.app over here. Double click them. And then you can just add them just at the end uh, of uh, the implementation. Sorry, not over here, but over here. Right. So we just replace and uh, compile with implementation. Okay. okay. Just as easy as that. And then don't forget to go to the layout and then go to code over here. Right. Code. And then press sync now okay, to synchronize the library. You need to have the internet for this to work. And then you look here at the text view. Right. And then you go back over here. Look at the documentation. You need to create a text view uh, GUI element. Okay. You have to copy this. Right. Okay, replace the original text view. It replace the original text view so it is uh, drop replaceable and then you go back to the main activity and then you can replace this right and replace this text view with this count animation text view so you copy here count animation text view so don't copy the m but the class name only count animation text view so count animation text view, you place this and then you press ultimate enter to import and then you also need to replace this. Okay, cast to this, alright. Okay, next, uh, just refer back to the documentation. Okay, you can uh, set the animation and then set the count animation. So count animation means that this is zero, this is the end number. Okay, animation duration means the how long the animation will play out. So 5000 means uh, for 5 seconds. Okay, 5000 means 5 seconds. So uh, surely you do not want the animation duration to go to 5 seconds because this will slow down your application. So you can set for lower count right so this set text uh, you replace it with set animation duration okay let's say about uh two seconds is enough okay and then set okay set count animation sorry okay the start number is zero and then this two value okay from from where to where so two value would be two discount two discount number so that's it so you can replay back the application and then you notice that the animation has already been functioning All right but uh this still have its own um weaknesses Ada lagi kelemahan. So, what is the weaknesses? Okay, the weaknesses will show up when you press reset. Right? When you press reset. And then, uh, you restart back the application. When you click add, the app does not seem to function. Okay. Why? The, uh, the app button seems not to function when you press reset. Okay, like this. Okay, this is because the animation would try to go from 0 to 0 and then it will display 0 for 2 seconds. Selama 2 saat, dia akan jadi 0. Okay, nampak tak dia punya problem dia? You can see the problem. Okay. Right. Tiba-tiba dia jadi 10, 12, 15. So, uh, to remedy this, Okay, you can set that the count, uh, the animation will only function if the count is more than 10. So, you set that if the count more than 10, only then that you can set the animation. Otherwise, the animation will not function. Okay, otherwise, the animation will not function. Alright, okay. Suppose this should work. But you need to 
uh, set the we need to set the right uh, you need still have to set the default value for the TV counter so for this you need to set the default value set text count right And then you press replay. See if this is supposed to work. Okay, this one does not work. Okay, why it does not work? Because okay, I haven't put here as plus. Okay, you need to put plus like this. Okay, now it's working. Uh, now uh, it's no longer lag uh, lagging. Now it's no longer lagging. It is only will a uh, display animation if the number is more than 10. Right, like this. Right, okay. If less than 10, then it will uh, no longer display an animation. Okay, like 7. Right, no animation. And still no animation. More than 10, like this. Then it will have an animation. Alright. So, uh, what we have learned today is how to handle a simple tally counter application and then we learn about how to use the shared preferences so to save the high score. Okay, uh, for this matter, uh, we have counter, the high score and also how to load back the uh, value okay to be displayed on the text view okay we implement this as a useful application we call it as tally counter and then i've already teach you a bonus on how to animate the number right until then be seeing you on the next video and that's the end of our lab session please do not forget to do your lab exercise this exercise will help you prepare to do your group assignment and also your project. Cheers!